So I understand that, uh, that Mrs. Redding uh, was with you uh, uh, not long ago. Um, and uh, you know, I think it is, uh, it is fitting that we have uh, sort of this, uh, this conversation uh, about uh, the efforts that are going on on privacy on both sides of the Atlantic. We are each engaged in a project of updating privacy protections uh, to deal with the current technology, to deal with uh, a digital age, uh, an age when uh, increasingly we are, all of us, generating uh, more data uh, about ourselves. Uh, uh, you know, whether it is uh, posting the notice of a, a birthday party on, uh, on Facebook uh, or information that we generate uh, about our location on, cell phone, on our cell phones uh, or you know, increasingly data about all aspects uh, of our lives, things you know, that we may generate uh, uh, from sensors. You, know, you can now use uh, a cell phone to, as a stethoscope. Uh, you can now use it uh, uh, you know, as, a, as an athletic uh, training device as uh, uh, you know, combined with uh, a heart rate monitor and track your health from moment to moment. All of this uh, generates data, uh, data that may uh, reside uh, uh, in the cloud and not uh, uh, not on a device. Uh, this opens up enormous possibilities of you know, new frontiers of human knowledge as that, uh, that data uh, can, uh, can be used to uh, explore new uh, avenues of health research. Uh, can be location data uh, can be used uh, uh, for public safety to, you know, in, a, uh, in an emergency. But obviously, it you know, brings with it uh, uh, enormous implications uh, about what we share uh, with the public, what information uh, becomes uh, uh, accessible uh, to, uh, to the government uh, as, well as, uh, uh, as well as to others. Uh, so, this is an important project uh, that uh, each of uh, uh, each side of the Atlantic uh, is engaged on. Uh, it is also uh, you know, a project that is vitally important to mutual commitments to uh, to uh, economic growth uh, and to an economic partnership. You know, last year, um, uh, you know, at the U.S.-EU summit, uh, uh, President Obama and President uh, von Rompuy uh, affirmed that the United States uh, and the European Union are committed to uh, encouraging innovation, to encouraging uh, entrepreneurship, uh, and to supporting uh, jobs uh, and growth. What we do in the data privacy area uh, is important to, to that, uh, that partnership. Uh, in March uh, of last year, Mrs. Redding uh, uh, and uh, the Secretary of Commerce, uh, John Bryson, issued a uh, joint statement on privacy which underscored uh, the goals of the US-EU summit uh, and emphasized that the United States and the European Union share uh, a commitment to uh, promoting the rights of individuals to have their data protected uh, uh, and to facilitate the interoperability of our uh, data privacy frameworks. Uh, the joint statement uh, uh, expressed that the United States uh, and the European Union clearly share a commitment to promoting the rights of individuals uh, to have their personal data protected 
uh, and to facilitating the interoperability of our commercial data privacy regimes. The European Union and the United States uh, are global leaders in protecting individual freedoms, including privacy, while at the same time uh, fostering innovation and trade uh, that are so critical to the world economy, uh, notably in the present times. Stronger transatlantic cooperation in the field of data protection will enhance consumer trust uh, and promote uh, the continued growth of the global internet economy uh, and the evolving uh, digital transatlantic common market. Uh, this work will also uh, encourage uh, innovation and entrepreneurship and support the jobs and growth uh, agenda uh, outlined by President uh, Obama and Presidents Van Rompuy and uh, Barroso at the November 28th US-EU summit. So it's in this spirit of cooperation and on data privacy that uh, the United States has uh, invited the EU to participate in ongoing processes, uh, uh, multi-stakeholder processes in which we are developing uh, enforceable codes of conduct uh, uh, in commercial sectors. Um, and tomorrow, uh, I will be in Brussels to speak to an interparliamentary meeting uh, along with other representatives of the United States government to uh, talk about our perspective on the European legislative proposals uh, uh, and the ways that we can strengthen the interoperability uh, of our data uh, privacy systems. Both the United States and the European Union recognize that, that uh, we need clear rules of the road to foster economic growth uh, uh, and to foster innovation. Uh, we both recognize that uh, trust uh, is in the internet economy is a vital commodity, uh, a vital commodity for consumers who have to be able to trust uh, uh, that their data will be used uh, in ways that are consistent uh, with their expectations um, and uh, uh, will be protected uh, you know, from access uh, you know, by third parties uh, uh, who, you know, to whom they haven't uh, uh, committed uh, that data. Uh, it's equally, on the other side, uh, important to, to companies because uh, you know, companies uh, uh, rely on that trust uh, in order to engage uh, uh, in transactions. Um, we also recognize uh, the importance of innovation in this speech, uh, in this space. Uh, we also recognize uh, uh, that you know, as uh, uh, the draft uh, legislation in the EU says that uh, cross-border flows of, uh, of data uh, uh, are necessary uh, for the expansion of trade uh, uh, and for international cooperation. So um, uh, we, uh, we will continue, uh, our conversation continue uh, to express uh, our views uh, uh, on uh, the European process as we uh, have invited uh, the Europeans to, uh, uh, to, to be stakeholders uh, in our process. You know, the United States uh, uh, has uh, a deep uh, tradition of privacy uh, protection. Uh, these are deeply held values in the United States. Our Fourth Amendment uh, to our Constitution uh, you know, rests uh, on a deep uh, distrust of uh, government uh, intrusion on individual privacy. Um, uh, and you know, we have uh, built up uh, over the years a set uh, uh, of statutes uh, 
uh, and you know, judicial protections uh, uh, you know, under both statutes and common law uh, on that foundation. Um, we also uh, have, uh, have strong uh, protections uh, uh, in uh, statutes uh, across a range uh, uh, of sectors, the financial sector, uh, health uh, records, uh, uh, telecommunications uh, records, uh, all protected uh, uh, by statutes uh, uh, that have been on the books uh, uh, some going back to the 1980s. Uh, the United States uh, in the 1970s developed a set of uh, fair information uh, practice principles that you know, are a foundation for privacy uh, protection around the world. Those uh, fair information practice principles uh, inform the 1995 uh, European Data Privacy uh, Directive. Uh, they are the foundation of the OECD recommendations. Um, uh, in the 1970s, uh, the United States uh, adopted uh, uh, a federal government uh, privacy act that uh, uh, regulates how our federal agencies uh, uh, can handle uh, private information. Um, and it is out of, uh, out of that uh, uh, framework uh, that you know, we now have uh, privacy impact uh, assessments. Um, uh, we also have in the United States uh, strong enforcement uh, by uh, our Federal Trade Commission um, and by, uh, by uh, state uh, attorneys general. Um, enforcement that holds companies to the promises that they make in privacy policies and, uh, and any other uh, undertakings. Um, you know, it is that uh, enforcement uh, uh, that led uh, to uh, enforcement actions against uh, Google for its rollout uh, of Google Buzz, uh, uh, and more recently, a uh, $22.5 million uh, fine. Uh, that uh, the FCC uh, levied uh, uh, against Google under the consent decree uh, that it, uh, uh, it entered. This is a complementary process uh, of enforcement that uh, goes uh, uh, side by side with the extraordinarily, uh, extraordinarily detailed and transparent audit uh, uh, that Billy Hawk's uh, Data Protection Commission uh, re just recently issued uh, on Facebook. But in some sense goes you know, with the imposition of fines uh, um, and you know, with the 20-year uh, requirement uh, uh, of audits uh, of Facebook uh, further uh, than what the DPC has done here. So you know, these efforts uh, are working together uh, to protect uh, you know, a billion uh, Facebook users uh, uh, globally. Uh, the FTC has done, uh, uh, taken similar ac uh, enforcement actions uh, uh, against, uh, uh, with Facebook, um, uh, with MySpace, uh, uh, among others. Uh, so you know, this is, uh, a s system of enforcement uh, uh, that reflects a strong uh, set of privacy values uh, and a system uh, uh, that has been effective in putting uh, you know, privacy uh, into practice, has built up uh, uh, a culture of compliance uh, yeah, among American companies. Um, you know, uh, some of you may be familiar with the International Association of uh, Privacy Professionals. It's a global uh, organization um, and uh, a couple of years ago I uh, attended an event there and a, uh, a commissioner 
uh, a data privacy commissioner said to me, you know, many of my European colleagues say that America uh, does not care about privacy. But how come when I come to these events, all of the people attending uh, are Americans? Uh, you know, that is, I think, a reflection of, uh, of the culture of, uh, of compliance uh, that uh, has been built up by uh, you know, our sectoral uh, regimes, by the enforcement uh, that is in place from, uh, from the Federal Trade Commission uh, and other uh, law enforcers. Uh, I think it is also a recognition of some of the market imperatives to build up trust, uh, to, have, uh, to have a trusted brand. But we believe today that you know, self-regulation alone is not enough, uh, that, uh, that there is a role uh, uh, for legislation uh, in the United States uh, uh, to strengthen uh, privacy protections, uh, to reinforce uh, trust uh, within uh, the system uh, to, uh, and to increase uh, uh, our international uh, cooperation. Um, so the Obama administration embarked uh, uh, going on three years ago in a policy process uh, very much parallel to, uh, to what the European uh, Commission has been through. Um, I had the, the privilege of, sort of co-leading uh, that process uh, uh, as a co-chair of, uh, of the interagency uh, committee uh, within our government uh, that led that process. But we spent uh, two years in a process of engagement uh, with stakeholders, uh, uh, listening, uh, trying to understand uh, the technology issues, the privacy issues. Um, and last January, the Obama administration had, uh, uh, put out uh, a, uh, a privacy blueprint uh, that uh, set forth uh, a consumer privacy bill of rights, a statement of basic expectations that uh, consumers uh, uh, should have uh, as they deal uh, with companies as they deal uh, with the, the transactions uh, and interactions uh, uh, online and in other environments that involve some exchange of their data. Uh, you know, these uh, it's, uh, seven principles, um, uh, individual control, transparency, uh, access uh, and accuracy, what we call respect uh, for context, um, you know, an adaptation of the um, uh, both the data minimization uh, principles and use limitation principles that um, that adopts the understanding that that you know how. Uh, consumers uh, expect their data to be used varies uh, according to the context. Um, uh, and that uh, similarly you know, consent uh, and other things need to uh, vary uh, according to the context. Uh, we also uh, believe uh, uh, that you know, data security uh, is one of those basic rights. Um, we have in 46 states in the United States uh, data breach laws, uh, uh, but we believe that there should be you know, a single uh, national uh, standard. Uh, so we are advocating that. Um, as, so there are really four major elements of the blueprint. Um, uh, the consumer privacy uh, Bill of Rights, uh, the endorsement of legislation to give the, those rights uh, legal force, 
uh, and to make those rights uh, uh, enforceable by our uh, Federal Trade Commission. Uh, the uh, third element uh, uh, is to flush out uh, the, uh, the Consumer Privacy Bill of Rights uh, through a multi-stakeholder uh, policy development process. Uh, we believe that, that the, one of the great strengths of the Internet uh, in this global communications network uh, that we have today um, is that it is not run by any, any one government. It is not run by government, that it has been uh, an entity that has been uh, transnational, multi-stakeholder, uh, and that the governance by institutions uh, uh, you know, like uh, the World Wide Web Forum uh, uh, and other multi-stakeholder, governmental, non-governmental, uh, academic, uh, uh, has been part of the success of the Internet because it has uh, transcended boundaries, because it has made it uh, adaptable uh, and flexible and has enabled uh, the, the enormous uh, innovation uh, uh, and you know, dynamic economic growth that we have seen coming out of the Internet. So we want to preserve that. We want to incorporate uh, you know, that kind of policy making uh, into uh, the way that we approach policy making in the Internet. So we have said that, that you know, we are going to proceed with you know, using the same multi-stakeholder model uh, to uh, develop uh, privacy policies based on the Consumer Privacy Bill of Rights. Uh, so we have begun a process to deal with uh, transparency in mobile applications. Uh, uh, that began in July. We've convened uh, several meetings uh, of stakeholders uh, uh, to uh, try to work out what, you know, how on this small screen uh, uh, you know, do you provide adequate uh, uh, transparency so that consumers can understand how uh, their mobile data uh, is being used. Um, that process uh, uh, is, has been moving forward. Uh, discussions continue. We have more scheduled. Uh, it's a challenging process. You know, anytime you bring people disparate uh, views uh, uh, together, uh, there will be uh, some pulling and tugging, but uh, you know we expect that you know just as we've seen in other internet multi-stakeholder processes that you know, some consensus uh, will uh, be achievable uh, at the end of the day. Uh, we are moving forward as well to uh, with the drafting uh, of legislation uh, to implement uh, uh, the. Uh, Consumer Bill of Rights and, uh, uh, you know, give it uh, the legal force uh, that I spoke about. Um, the final element of uh, our uh, privacy blueprint uh, is international interoperability. Um, this is something that uh, uh, is vital uh, in you know, to our economies. Uh, it's a, a goal, a principle um, uh, that, you know, is especially important in these, you know, fragile economic times. The United States and Euro Europe are, you know, united uh, not just by common cultures and values uh, uh, and people, but our economies. Uh, are inextricably linked. Uh, you know, they together uh, account for half of global uh, uh, GDP. Uh, trade between the United States and the European Union accounts for uh, nearly one third uh, of global trade flows, uh, uh, you know, with 15 million uh, jobs at stake. Uh, 
uh, we need to maintain these flows. We need to grow this market. Uh, uh, we need to allow companies uh, to develop uh, uh, on both sides uh, uh, of the Atlantic and to expand uh, uh, the uh, global growth uh, agenda. Uh, so, you know, as we each proceed uh, forward with the development of privacy protections to enhance trust uh, in that environment, uh, uh, it is important uh, that you know, we do no harm. Uh, so, the questions uh, before us, uh, the questions uh, particularly in our discussions uh, with, uh, with the European Union are, you know, how do we ensure that these rules of the road uh, do no harm? Uh, how do we set these rules in ways uh, that will enable uh, international interoperability? Uh, we have one important mechanism in place today. Uh, that is the US-EU safe harbor framework uh, uh, that you know, will continue uh, under, uh, under the, uh, the proposed uh, regulation. Uh, we need to keep that uh, mechanism in place, but we need to build on it. Uh, we need to allow uh, binding uh, corporate rules uh, uh, to be flexible enough uh, um, and you know, to be administratively simple enough that uh, you know, companies uh, can adopt those to allow international flows. Uh, we need to expand uh, mechanisms uh, of accountability uh, so that you know, companies uh, um, you know, can proceed to, uh, to share uh, data uh, across borders uh, um, you know, in a vast uh, number of contexts uh, uh, in ways that will hold them accountable to standards uh, in our country, to standards uh, uh, in the EU. Um, uh, you know, whether those are uh, through audits, whether it's uh, subsequent uh, uh, liability. Um, uh, you know, we also uh, want to hope that the provisions uh, uh, in the regulation uh, for, to, uh, to allow for the development uh, uh, of standards of conduct uh, will be an important tool to bring to, uh, to policy making, to bring uh, to uh, the development uh, uh, of and the application of privacy policies in the European Union, the you know, same dynamic uh, multi-stakeholder uh, process uh, that we seek to uh, incorporate uh, into our policy making. Uh, and so, uh, these are, I think, our key objectives uh, uh, in our dialogue. Uh, to maintain uh, the flow of information, the flow of data across borders, so uh, that we can continue uh, the dynamic economic relationship that exists uh, between the United States and the European Union, uh, and to build on that. So uh, thank you. Uh, I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you.